To those who know me, I am a big nerd. I play D&D, I read books, I love Disney movies, I love Pokemon, I'm way into Harry Potter, superheroes, and Alice in Wonderland. I'm not into everything extremely nerdy in pop culture, because that would be a lot, but I have my niches that I'm comfortable with. You'd think that with my enjoyment of nerdy things that I would have gone to more conventions over the past years. Nope. I'm an ambivert, so if my friends don't go to a convention, then I sure as heck am not going to go. That being said though, there hasn't been a ton of times where I've been to a convention with my friends either. I think I've only gone to one convention with my friends that is closed its doors forever after we went. That's so sad. But this story is not about those times, this is the story about when I went to my first convention ever. Completely alone. But first let me tell you about what I'm drawing. Today I'm drawing Gareth Bly, my D&D character that I play with a bunch of my friends with. I'm drawing a sort of head turnaround, kind of, showing what he looks like without his big black furry hood. If you want to know more about this character, I have a series on my YouTube channel where I do a dramatic reading of his journal entries throughout the campaign. Go watch it if you want, and if you like what you hear, or you want more storytime videos like this one, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now. Back to the harrowing time when I went to my first convention. Alone. I was living in Utah at the time and was still in high school. I had just gotten my first job at a pizza place and was making money for myself for the first time in my life. Now, in Utah, there's a pretty popular convention called Fan X. It is in Salt Lake City and at the Salt Palace most years, and it's pretty much exactly like Comic-Con. So much so, in fact, it used to be called Salt Lake Comic-Con. But then there was some icky business about using the name from the one in San Diego? Sacramento? I don't know, some Californian city got all uppity that it used the same name as them, even though it was at a different place and was held at a different time than the Comic-Con there. I think California just doesn't like other states to have nice things, and that includes the name Comic-Con. Because Dang it, that's our name, and you can't take it even though we've been using it for years. And we're okay with it until this point. Original OC, do not steal. Mwah. Lawyers, they're calling their comic convention the short slang for comic convention too. Mwah. Point is, it was stupid. And Salt Lake Comic Con knew it was stupid too, so it changed its name to Fanex to make Baby Comic Con happy. Why did I tell you this? Because that story gave me mad respect for the convention, so I wanted to go. Thing is, whenever I brought it up to my friends, who had gone almost every year before, they'd tell me that they didn't want to go this year. Huh? What? These friends of mine had gone for multiple years straight beforehand, and now they didn't want to go? I'm not gonna lie, I felt a little bit salty. They had asked their parents to go in the years before, and their parents spent the 50 to to $100 just to buy them tickets to get into the venue. Then they bought a bunch of cool things and knickknacks that I was so jealous of when they came and showed me their bounty. They dressed up in cosplay and made a whole weekend of it, and I was left in the dust every single time. My parents didn't want to spend however much the ticket was. I honestly don't remember the pricing back then. And to be honest, I didn't want them to buy me a ticket either. I didn't have the money to buy the fun stuff that my friends brought back, 
so I figured I wouldn't have as much fun at the conventions, especially in Artist Alley, which is what I always was most excited for whenever the convention rolled around. But now I had money! I was slaving away to make pizza at $7.25 an hour. I had enough for a ticket and some pocket change left over. I wanted to go, but my friends didn't. Now to be fair and not completely throw my high school friends under the bus, a lot of them had their reasons for not wanting to go. There wasn't going to be any celebrities there that they wanted to go see, nor did most of the panels that year interest them. A few of them were going on family trips when the convention was open, so they wouldn't even be in town. But still, it felt bad. So did I wallow in my room as the convention came and went? <laughs> no, then I wouldn't be telling you this story. Of course I went. But I would be going alone. I didn't prepare hardly at all for it. I was still a bit timid of going by myself though, so I bought a cheaper pass that only covered two of the four days of the convention. Well, actually that's not true that I didn't prepare anything. I was going to ride the train down from my home in the Ogden area down to Salt Lake City, so I practiced riding the train called the Front Runner a little bit up and down the tracks. Soon, the day of the convention came, though, and I packed my Harry Potter bag with a water bottle and snacks to cut down on food costs. Said goodbye to my parents, who dropped me off at the train station, boarded the train, and rode all the way down to Salt Lake City. As soon as I was on the train, I knew I was headed in the right direction. This lady who sat across from me was all dressed up in a disco fox outfit with tails that looked like they were supposed to be holographic. I didn't know what character she was supposed to be, but she looked cool. Of course, I didn't go talk to her, I'm not the talking sort of person. And besides, more of her friends dressed up like anime characters came and joined her as we went down, stop by stop. I'm not gonna lie, I felt a bit underdressed only wearing a corny nerd shirt, jeans, sneakers, and a Harry Potter backpack. But soon we made it into Salt Lake, and we all got off the train and into the city. As a side note, I had never been to the city alone before. Every time I found myself in Salt Lake City, I was with my parents or friends, and we never stayed there for very long, an hour at most. Now I was alone, in the big city. But surely I just needed to follow this group of cosplayers, right? They would lead me to where the convention center is, right? Well, imagine my horror when several of the cosplay girls asked, Where is the convention center again? And all of them collectively freaked out, as they say their data isn't working and they can't find directions on Google Maps. At this point, I had probably overstayed my welcome with these girls because a few of them were looking at me, so I decided to go try to find the convention center on my own. My phone didn't have any data on it at the time, so I went to the next best thing. The maps on the side of the train station. I can read maps, kids. It's a useful skill when trying to find convention centers without a phone. I found where I was going pretty quickly and eventually arrived at the Salt Palace Convention Center. I was so excited. People dressed as my favorite characters walked down the street in broad daylight. Music from popular TV shows blared. It was amazing. For the first few minutes. Since I had never gone before, I assumed that the front entrance would be where I was supposed to show my ticket. But the front doors of the convention center read, Not an entrance. That was... Odd. So I started walking down to find some doors. Soon, a couple came up to me and asked me where the entrance to the convention was. 
I told them I was looking for it too, and they said that they had been looking for two hours. Two hours of circling the building. Heck. <laughs> ah, that made my anxiety spike. I told them I'd keep looking, then awkwardly left the conversation. Already my social battery was beginning to drain, and I hadn't even made it into the convention center. Eventually, after circling the building myself and finding the convention worker, I was led to the correct entry point. Some convention workers checked my bag, and I was let into the show. And I had no idea what I was doing. Again, remember, this is my first ever convention. I didn't know how panels worked, where to find what I was looking for, or who I needed to find for help in a crowd of people going in and out of places. It was just little old high school me, lost in a sea full of anime and pop culture references. So I wondered. I admired the cosplayers' outfits as I journeyed through one end of the hall to the other. I wondered why there was so much empty space where decorations could be put up. I had been to church parties that were more decorated than this convention hall. It was then I realized I had just spent an hour roaming the halls of the convention center, and there were no actual rules for not going in and out of the rooms. Forgive my stupidity, I was alone and unsupervised. I blame my friends for abandoning me, their convention newbie. So I finally opened a door of my own accord, and angels sung as bright lights blinded me. Decorations of superheroes dotted the walls, and dragons hung from the ceiling. And what lie before me was an endless sea of artists selling their wares. I had found the artist alley. What had been so far a stressful experience melted away as my eyes became rose-tinted, going in and out of the marketplaces of arts and prints. But there was so much more than only art. There were stuffed animals, swords, potion bottles, comic books, normal books, an R2D2 robot going around and saying hi to people. I was in love. I spent a good chunk of my time in the artist alley. I bought a plush yellow hamster and a pair of Quidditch goggles from a few of the vendors there. I really wanted a sword, but pizza money can only get you so far. Sadly, I didn't get any art for my trip. I was too nervous to ask the artists what they had for sale because I was alone and didn't have anyone to speak for me when I got all flustered talking to artists I liked. I would have gone to a few panels if I had known where they were at, but I didn't know any of the room numbers or places to be where they were being held. I'm sure there was supposed to be a handout or a sign somewhere that explained it all, but I had no idea where that was. And since I didn't have the convention center's password for the internet, I had no way to pull up the website on my phone to check the details online. <sighs> this is what being one of the oldest siblings gets ya. If your parents were like mine, they didn't get data on your phone because they claimed you didn't need to be on the internet, and a phone was only that. A phone. Nah, my parents were good parents. They're just slow on the technology acceptance thing. It was only this past year they finally got an Alexa. Regardless though, after I had my fill of the artist alley, I began to be a little bored. I had eaten all my snacks, drank all my water, and was starting to feel hungry. With me being my little self, it seemed to be weird going to a restaurant all by myself in downtown Salt Lake. Besides, I had spent all my budget on the first day of the convention and couldn't buy myself food. This was the days before DoorDash, Grubhub, and even Uber, so I couldn't order any food to come to me. Not that it would have mattered anyway, because I couldn't get on my phone to look up places to go eat. I was stuck, hungry, and bored. 
So I went home. Yep, I spent about three hours in the convention center before calling it quits and going back home for lunch. I didn't go back at all. What's more, since I had spent my entire budget on the first day, I didn't see any reason to go back because what was I gonna do? Walk Artist Alley again? A smart person would have gone home, printed out a list of the panels she wanted to go see, and go back to hopefully have a better time at the convention center. But I was tired, and being around all those people really took it out of me. Besides, I had a new Pokemon game waiting for me when I got home. And that's pretty much the end of my first convention I ever went to. I know all of you seasoned convention goers are rolling in your chairs right now going, You wasted your time and money! Why didn't you go back? Yeah, I know. Now I'm much more careful about what I buy and for what times. If I ever plan on going to an event, I have a list of all the details of what I want to do, and I have a plan. But most importantly, I have friends who actually want to go with me to the convention. It was fun to go alone, just to have the experience of going to a convention, but I severely regretted not going with friends to keep me entertained and sane. After all, I was dead beat tired when I finally got home that day. People wear me out. But being an ambivert means that the right people can help me feel energized again. Moral of the story is, it's not safe to go alone. Take friends. That's my first convention story. But now I want to hear from you guys. How was your first convention? Did you go with friends? Did you cosplay a character? Please share with me so I can do better in my next convention experiences. Once again, the drawing that I've been doing in the background is a head turnaround of my Dungeons & Dragons character, Gareth Bly. If you want to learn more about him, I have been doing a dramatic reading series of his journal entries throughout the campaign on my YouTube channel. The videos are all in a playlist on my channel if you want to listen to them. If you have already listened to them all and can't wait until the next one comes out, or if you like more chill storytime videos like this one, please consider subscribing so that you'll be notified whenever I post new videos. I'll see you again. Till then, bring someone with you to conventions, please. <laughs>